G'day, my name's Gordon Deadman and thanks for joining me for another episode of Bushcraft Survival. Today we're in Mora, Sweden, in northern Sweden. I'm over here for the Maraknev or Mora Knife Adventure which starts in a couple of days time. But in the meantime, I thought I'd do a bit of a hike and do some camping to see the woods of Sweden. I've never been to Sweden before so I'm really excited about being here and seeing what the woods here have to offer. Behind me we've got a beautiful lake which I can't wait to throw a line in and see what is in there and about 400 metres in this direction we have a river as well so between the two hopefully we'll be able to get a couple of fish. I'm going to get a shelter set up and a fire going and have a really nice camp for a couple of days and just enjoy being in the woods here. So come along and I hope you enjoy it. Well, I've decided on this area here, hey, we're not too far from the lake, but it's a little bit higher than the lake. And the reason for that, why I've chosen this area is because cold air sinks and it gets getting down to about uh, five degrees at night. So I want to localize, the localized low spot is down there. So that cold air is going to sink and fall down there. So I don't want to be down there because it's going to be a little bit, it's substantially cooler. So this is a high bit of ground. So it's actually going to be, it's, it feels nice, it's, it's going to be a little bit warmer. Uh, checked above for deadfall, nothing can fall down, we're in a, pretty much a pine forest here. There's a few birch trees around and we're going to be utilising those for a few things. And uh, nice and flat and it's got a really nice feel about it. So I'm looking forward to it, it's going to be great. I've got something I can make uh, turn into like a seat over here. So I'm um, looking forward to uh, um, getting stuck into it and making this home. got our shelter up and we've got our sleeping kit now we're going to stick under it. First we have a ground sheet which is a sheet of plastic to um, um, as a moisture barrier. We have a, I've got a snug pack kestrel which is rated down to zero. I have an inflatable ground mattress. I have a British, British Army bivvy bag and we have a Cedar Summit uh, reactor thermal which adds about five to eight degrees to our sleeping bag which is going to keep us nice and toasty and warm. So let's get this set up. Very important that in cold climates you have some sort of insulation underneath you. You could have the best sleeping bag in the world, but if you don't have insulation underneath you, you're going to re, um, lose heat from your body through to the cold ground through conduction. So whether it's a man-made um, device or a natural shelter, you need to have some form of insulation underneath you. So in this environment, a inflatable um, sleeping mat is, is great. A closed cell mattress would be just as good. It's just what I happen to have with me. Next thing out is the uh, British Army bivvy bag. These are really great, very inexpensive these. I think I picked this up for about 25 pounds a few years ago. Um, really great piece of kit. And you know, nice and wide so you can uh, fit many things, you know, sleep, sleeping bag inside it. Because what I want to do is put my mat inside the bivvy bag. So my sleeping mat goes inside it. And that way I don't roll off it. There we go. And this adds a different, uh, gives you an extra layer of heat to trap heat as well. 
So we've got that in there. Now I'm going to take my sleeping bag out, which is the Snug Pack Kestrel. Great sleeping bag, this. I, I use this a lot. And instead of getting a new rating of sleeping bag to take me down to below minus five, I find the uh, uh, Cedar Summit Thermalong liners, the reactors are really good because it adds, you know, as I said, five or five to eight degrees to your sleeping bag. So you don't need to get a big sleep, uh, a, a, a thicker sleeping bag. However, if you're going to be in that environment for a substantial period of time, yeah, you'd invest in that. It just gives you a bit more flexibility. Don't have to worry about snakes or spiders here crawling here, not like in Australia, so it's uh, it um, doesn't have that excitement. So it's a bit more sedate in that way. And I'll get this out tonight. Uh, actually, I might as well get it out now so you can see what it is. Now, because we're up in the north, it's going to be twilight till about 11 o'clock tonight, something like that. I got in off the plane yesterday and it took me a while to try and get some sleep even though I hadn't slept in uh, over 35 hours. So this is literally just adds five, a few degrees to your sleeping bag but it also keeps it clean. Really, really good, good piece of kit this and it weighs nothing. So I'll put that in there and I'll jump into that later. So that's everything. I'll put all the cases inside the other case and I can stuff some clothes in that and use that as a pillow. So I've got my bivy bag here, I've got my sleeping mat inside the bivy, the sleeping bag and my Thermalong liner, all ready for bed. So I'm going to just, I like to fold that up, it just sort of keeps it all contained, nice and neat, and I'm ready to crawl into bed later on. Now it's time to collect some firewood. Now in this environment, Anything that's lying on the ground is wet. It was raining yesterday and it's going to be saturated. So we don't want to collect anything from the ground. What I'm after is dead standing wood. And there's a lot of pines here and hemlock where they're completely dead. And what I'm after is, is stuff because basically because they're vertical, they're going to get less rain on them. Anything that's lying horizontal is going to um, soak up the rain because it can soak in. So we want something ideally that's vertical and that's going to be a lot drier than anything that's horizontal and off the ground. So these are all dead. So I just push over. Just like that. Instead of using my saw, all I need to do is just put that in between two trees that are close together. And whoop, there's another one that has fallen out nice and dead. That was what I was going to get next and just breaks off like that so there's no need to blunt in your, your tools it's simply like that just using leverage and all these little ones i can use as kindling works really well Now when you're collecting kindling, make sure all these ends are going to be useless because they're not going to burn properly. So what we want to do is fold all of that and compress it. So there aren't any sort of loose ends. We want a nice compressed pile like that. Get nice big piles. All the loose stuff like that is wasted. So you don't want to do that when you're collecting kindling. Kindling or tinder. Break it up so we get a nice dense clump. And that doesn't matter where you are in the world. That's what we want to do. Trying to collect this firewood. I'm going to probably spend a good amount of time collecting a lot of wood because I want a big pile. Generally speaking, whatever amount of wood you think you need for the night, that's about four or five times that. The colder it is, the greater the amount of wood. Hear that crack? That's what we're after. A nice crack and that's a good sign to me that that's nice and dry inside. Anything that's off the ground won't crack like that. 
So these, once again, grabbing, folding, getting that condensed bundle like that, and that will burn. Now when it comes to tinder, in the northern boreal forest, nothing beats birch bark. From the birch tree, silver birch, there's a number of species of birch. Can't, not exactly sure which one this is, but the bark contains betulin, which is like an oil. And just peeling that bark off, it's gonna, just like our paper bark back home from the Metaluca tree, this makes great tinder. I was looking for a tree that was dead on the ground so I could take the bark from that because I generally don't like taking it from a live tree. However, I'm just taking it in places I'm not going to try and strip the whole whole tree. So I only need a little bit, a little bit of, of this stuff. And we're going to get our fire going with some of this stuff. It really is magnificent stuff. So this is going to help us with our tinder. Okay, we're ready to light our fire. Firstly, I've cleared the ground down to bare earth because in this environment, the ground itself can burn. We're in like a, a pine forest and we have a lot, there's a sort of a lot of peat and a lot of roots. So I've dug down to bare ground. It took me a fair while, got rid of a lot of the roots because we don't want the ground to burn. And it's very, very important we look after the environment that way. We've got a lake over there so we can extinguish the fire um, if we need to, and I've got some water on standby, but we shouldn't have a problem. I've, I've had good preparation so we're looking after the ground so dig down to the ground bare earth i've got my platform as always which is going to create a, 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 a moisture barrier to stop the cold damp earth sucking energy away from the fire which in this environment an environment is absolutely crucial it's the difference between success and failure in fire lighting at home fire lighting in australia is easy but in this environment when things are wet and damp it's crucial that you do this I have my kindling that we've collected um, in different grades right up in a, in, a, in a small stockpile of wood. And we've got our tinder, which in this case is going to be our birch bark. So in order to get our fire going, get the knife out, which and today I'm using the uh, bushcraft black, the Mora bushcraft black, and my ferro rod. Now just like paper bark, we can buff buff up the um, outside of that just like we do with our paper bark at home to create some a very fine powder just like that or we can get a little bit and just like our paper bark rather to get thin pieces tear it and create lots of surface area that way it's two different ways of doing it. it's up to you what you prefer all, all I'm going to do now is this Instead of using our gross movement of pulling back our um, ferro rod, I'm just going to use our, our thumb and the other control movement in order to put a spark into our tinder bundle. I'm trying to scrape a nice big uh, lump of the uh, ferrocerium into that uh, tinder. Now this wants to curl up, so I've got to, there we go, put my knife away, my tools away, right, and that's away, away it goes, put a little bit more on that, and that's away. Now I'll get my different grades of kindling, as always, leave a bit of air in there just so that catches you can see the ferocity that's burning with that's the betulin, and the oil inside the uh the bark amazing stuff flames come through the top i then add my next layer and we're away i've got lots and lots you can never have too much kindling so we want to, of course the harder it is the the more the, the greater the need for fire the harder it is to light it. So you must give yourself the best chance by having lots of um, kindling. Flames come through the top. I add my next layer. And that's loads. It's 
smells very different smell than what we smell at home but it's it's, it's beautiful and i can um these little bits of um pine i can smell the the resin in it it's a wonderful smell now i'll get my next layer and as always i'm going to go around in tp fashion plenty of wood here to hand to put on. The fire should be your biggest when you first start, but this will burn down to a nice manageable size. I mean, we don't need a big fire, you only need big fires to keep you warm when it's very, very cold. Most people have fires that are way, way too big. So that's fine. Now I can go and do other things and I know this is not gonna go out. What I've done is I've looked at a tree and I've been trying to find a straight bit with the side branch coming off because that side branch is going to act as our uh, pot hook because we're going to make a, a tripod with um, a hook that's going to hook our uh, cooking pot on. So basically you needed a straight branch with the side branch coming out off the main branch and that's what we've got. <laughs> What we're going to make is a pot stand now, a, a, a tripod that's going to hold our pot over the fire. So I've collected three green pieces of uh, pine, and there's lots of it here. It's not, not uh, in a pine forest, there's no shortage of it. And that's just because we don't want that to burn. We have our hook, which is a straight feet of branch with a side branch coming off, and I've dug up some spruce roots from the ground that's going to be our cordage to lash them together so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to hold these together at the top and i've got a couple of bits of spruce root the thinner one i can undo it I'm going to tie those even at the bottom. A clove hitch around this end. So clove hitch around about here, get them all even. So that crosses over. and back under itself. It's a good starting knot clove hitch for all sorts of lashes. And 
and then you can go around again you can do a combination of surgeons knots which we've seen in another episode and that should be enough just to hold that together because now I can splay I haven't done that too tight those legs apart and I can tighten those up a bit and wrap them around surgeon's not so great as well it's a, simply the first part of a shoelace and it's effectively the same thing as a, a clove hitch because you're just crossing another one under the other and you're constantly changing doing that tucking in any excess so this is my starter so that's going to hold it together I'm going to attach this second one you can do it if, you, if you've got a longer one you can do it all in one piece but it's um, the save digging up more I actually have had two shorter ones and the save digging up any more that was that suited my needs Right, oh, there we go. So what I'm going to do with this other end, I'm going to tie a clove hitch onto this end and then a half hitch further up. So clove hitch is going to go here once again. So over itself, so you can see, see what I'm doing. Over itself. And this one comes back and then under, under itself over under there we go there's our clove hitch and this one I'm going to take up here and I'm just going to do a half hitch and that's going to lock that off there pull that tight like that and that's going to hang like that so I've got two points where that's holding that and once again that can't come up there because yeah, so I've got two, two we've got like a second point there we've got a clove hitch and a half hitch and I just roughly get my height. It's going to hang about there. And from there, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to do a clove hitch from the side. Got to make it a little bit longer. Once again, over itself, back around and under itself. Knots and lashings are very important. Always sticking in, sticking up any excess. And then what we're going to do, I'm then with this one, we're going to go over the top. Just like that. And that's going to lock it off. Like that. Here we go, and if I need to, I might have to go around again, which I will. So I'll do that, we'll come over again, which is also going to add a bit of stability to, the, to our lashing here, which is what it is. Probably a little bit high now, which it is, but that's okay because I can adjust the legs to go out wider to make that lower like that and how that works is we take our cooking vessel with our hook which in this case is from the Pathfinder school it's the uh, our pot hanger which is an excellent piece of kit and that hooks without slipping off on our hook and it's over the fire 
in order to raise that to make that high I just simply move the legs in and we can get that off off the fire there we just raise that up like that and there we have an adjustable tripod this is great when you've got say soft ground and mud this works well we could have just done a simple uh, our usual uh, pot hanger but this is all bushcraft it's it's making things that you um, from what you find around you and it's quite a quite a nice elegant way of uh, coming up with a solution to uh, boil your water and speaking of water we're going to go down to the, the lake now and uh, get some water out of the lake so we can come back and we've got the stockpile of water that we can purify because we're going to purify it through boiling it. Well we're going to go down to the lake now and collect some water to um, refill our metal cooking pots and you should always treat all water as suspect, even if it is clear. Um, and we're going to coarse filter it through our Millbank bag and we'll probably collect it in one of these collapsible buckets and we'll bring it back up here then we can boil it over the fire. And boiling is the best way to get rid of all water about warm pathogens, except chemical pollutants. Bo boiling will not get rid of chemical pollutants, but all the waterways around here are absolutely pristine, they're beautiful. So be really, I very much doubt we're going to have any pollutants here because they really look after the environment here in Sweden. So um, we'll go and do that. So we'll hook in. Don't forget that you need to saturate the mill bank bag before you can use it. Very important to saturate it first. These Millbank bags are really, really good. I saturated the bag first, then filled it right up to the top, and then once the water dropped below this line, we then put the bucket underneath. So this is coarse filtering. This is getting rid of any sort of particulate matter. There's not a lot in here. It's pretty, I could probably get away with not doing it all, but it's just good to go through the process. But if there's any sort of turbidity, cloudiness, dirt, that sort of thing, this does a great job of getting rid of that. Then we can take it up and boil our water, and boiling will get rid of 99% of waterborne pathogens, best, particularly Giardia and Cryptosporidium, they're the, the nasty ones. But um, it works really well. These are going out of production now. Um, the Australian Army, st they're st they're still, you can still get them, but not, enough, not, not a lot of people use them, sadly. Very simple piece of kit, and I don't know why we don't. There's a guy in England that's, uh, re um, that, that's making these again, using the old specifications of the old cloth that was made and uh, his name is Rupert Brown. You can get them through his site and they're very, very good. So that's a Millbank bag. Once this is um, filled up, I have another collapsible bucket which I'll keep adding water to this. And once this is filled up, we'll take it back to camp and we've got a good amount of uh, water that we can use uh, to, to boil for our needs tonight. Well, while we're waiting for our uh, bucket to fill up with the Millbank bag, I thought we'd have a fish. So my fishing kit that I, I've brought with me is my collapsible Shimano rod. And we might get that out tomorrow actually and set that up. But what I thought we'd do is just try a couple of lures that I got today in uh, Mora and just use my hand line. I usually use as my, my preferred method of, of, of fishing using a hand line and I would prefer sort of using um, you know, bait for that and, uh, and using set lines. They always have a lot of success that way. And I'm just going to try a couple of uh, lures we've got today and see how they've been told there's even trout in some of these lakes. But if we don't get anything in here, we can go over to the river over there and they might have a better chance there. But um, these are great, these little kits, and pretty much it all fits in here. A couple of little boxes of lures and sinkers and so forth. 
and uh, I also have a mosquito head net not only for mosquitoes but it makes a great impromptu net for catching small fish like minnow and things like that which you can then use as live bait so I'm going to uh, put one of these lures on let's see what have we got Alright, oh, this one looks alright. I've got a spinner and one of these things. So I'll try a, a variety of different things. Now the action with the hand line doesn't, it's not as smooth as a, a uh, rod, but it's uh, still nice, nice to, uh, you know, still have a lot of success with this actually. Got a few salmon in Alaska using um, the hand line. Well, I stuck the uh, kettle on the boil and it's boiling away beautifully there so I'm just going to take that off now put that to one side I always make sure that with this um, tripod you actually put the hook stick up over one of the legs because we don't want the uh, our cordage which in this case is the spruce roots to be dry, drying out so you want to get that away from the flames they're out away from the heat so i thought we'd start off with a cup of tea so brought my brew kit along and i'm getting smoked out here Ugh. as long as you're not <laughs> oh. Hopefully they get rid of the smoke. Maybe not. And Harry gets of Yorkshire tea. Got a glove here, pour some of that out. There's fresh lake water in this uh, cup of tea. jingle and for powdered milk I actually bought this in this shop today um, at a hiking shop in um, Sweden Mora and it's actually powdered milk to go which is quite pretty cool actually so I'm going to try this in the tea and also got for our dinner tonight we have a wilderness stew with rice so this is a Swedish um, meals ready to eat. So I'm looking forward to trying that. We didn't get any fish, but we're going to have a fish tomorrow. Wasn't expecting to get into there. I'm pretty sure we'll get some have, have some better luck at the river. So this this is a pretty good idea. This I like this. So we've got some powdered milk. Two spoons of that. Bit of sugar out of my brew kit. Oh, sorry, not sugar. A bit of honey out of my brew kit. These tubes. And as soon as I finish this cup of tea, I'm going to stick some of this uh, wilderness stew with rice. 
that's in there. Looking forward, that's going to be really, really nice, I think. Put everything away, keep the, the camp neat and organised. And we'll sit back and uh, enjoy this cup of tea. Well, it's been a long day, an absolutely great day actually. It's probably it's around 9.30 at night. But it's nice that it gets dark so late, it just gives you more time to do things and it's, it's, it's nice. So I've got a lot, to, a, lot, a lot of things done today, but I'm pretty tired now, so I'm looking forward to cooking up some of our uh, wilderness stew with rice. That's going to go down like a treat. So I'm looking forward to cooking some of that and, and having that for dinner. But this cup of tea is really, really hitting the spot. I've made myself a seat here just so you can see it's actually a wood ant's nest and they don't pack a, a nasty bite so it's okay and I've actually just put some um, cut up some of these bits of pine to make a seat it's actually a very very comfortable seat so um, I'll give you a better look at that there we go works really really well it's a perfect height well what a day Absolutely spectacular day, beautiful place, such a lovely place in the world is Sweden. And uh, they've got, I've, forgot, I've forgotten the Swedish word, but they have a thing that which means the, the right to roam. You can go anywhere and camp anywhere and have a fire, there's no problem. And, and you're, you, for a 24 hour period, then you can pack up and, and move again. And you can do that anywhere, pretty much. And people don't litter. There's no. This people have such a respect for the environment here. It's 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 it's, it's marvelous. I wish we were like that back home in Australia. It's uh, and just people really really value nature. They call it the nature in Sweden. It's it's a very special thing. And, and to be able to do this is is, is fantastic. So um, we're going to be here for another day tomorrow in the area, so we'll have a fish. We're going to um, yeah, do a lot of stuff and make some bushcraft things and having the time to do it is, is marvellous. So I'm going to sit back and relax and enjoy this cup of tea. Then we're going to get some, some dinner on. Okay, so let's hook into our wilderness stew with rice. Well, let's put some water in I should say. It's always nice trying a few that is pretty good actually. So just going to add a little bit of hot water, just like most re dehydrated meals, be it civilian or army. Put some of that in there and let it sit for a bit. Give it a stir. Oh, I forgot we've actually got, oh no, we've got rice in here. I've got some potato flour as well, but I won't need that for this. Maybe tomorrow we'll have that. Okay, we'll just let this sit a bit, and then we'll hook in. So I didn't actually read how to do this on the back. A, because they're pretty similar all around the world, and B, um, it's in Swedish. Alright, let's have a look at this. Mmm, that is really bloody good. Very spicy. Yummo. Mmm. That is really good. Absolutely delicious. So this is the Blah Band, um, which is the brand, I think. 
wilderness stew with rice outdoor meal. Great stuff. There's a look there. Really nice. Bought in Sweden. The other thing I want, there are bears in Sweden as well, but they're further up and uh, yeah, they say there's a, they're, a bit, they're quite timid. Yeah, but um, I don't think any people have any, had any problems. Anyone says, you know, you're very few and far between, you'd be lucky to see one. However, golden rules don't eat in your camp. So I'm going to go, if I only had a spoon, I'm just going to go out somewhere else and eat this just to be on the safe side. And with that, I'm going to sign off for the night and uh, finish filming and, and go to bed and get a good night's sleep, even though it's, it's about 11 o'clock. And have a good night's sleep and we're, we'll get up and go for a fish probably on the riverside tomorrow morning. Hope we can get a couple of trout. So with that, I wish you a very good night and we'll see you in the morning. Well, good morning. I've left my um, clamp over there on the tree and it's a bit cold to get out of bed <laughs> so I'm holding it with my hand. Well, I think I've had a few hours sleep if that. It's, believe it or not, it's um, five o'clock in the morning. It actually got light at four o'clock. I think it got dark at around 11, 11.30 and it's light at, um, yeah, four o'clock in the morning and I uh, woke up with the with the light so it's very it's a bizarre feeling to have uh, uh, not that much darkness but um, that's what you get in the um, in the higher latitudes in the lower latitudes once you get down low enough in the southern hemisphere quite a chilly night uh, but um, but beautiful I was toasty and warm in my um, snug pack kestrel the thermal long liner and the British Army bivy bag so it actually works really really well as I was just toasty and warm all night so it's really really nice the odd mosquito this morning strangely enough but um, yeah quite a quite a what I what, when I did sleep I actually slept well but um, with the light I can't sleep anymore so I'm going to get up and get the fire going and have a nice cup of tea and we might look into doing some fishing but other than that, yeah, it's, it's really exciting to be here in the uh, Swedish woods. Yeah, it's absolutely wonderful. So I'm looking forward to a great day and we'll be getting to some more bushcraft stuff. Well, it's time for a bit of breakfast. And for breakfast this morning, from the same place I got last night's meal, we've got the Blah, Blah brand, sorry, Blah band, which is the brand, um, and it's apple cinnamon porridge. And it sounds really nice. Last night's meal was delicious, so I'm looking forward to this as well. And, uh, yep, what we need to do is we're just going to like most ready uh, dehydrated dehydrated meals we just need to add some hot water which have just boiled and let it sit for a couple of minutes so that's what we'll do it smells really good it smells beautiful while we're waiting for our uh, porridge to, um, to set I'm also going to try this Swedish coffee oh, it's actually Brazilian coffee brought in Sweden and uh, 
All we need to do is add some hot water to this and it brews in the packet. So this looks really, really good. Never seen, they've never seen these before. I'm not actually a huge coffee drinker, I prefer my tea. So all we need to do is open this up, fill it almost full with some hot water and let it sit for a few minutes and then we've got a nice um, bush cup of coffee. Oh, it smells really, really good. If you had smell of vision You'd, uh, you'd enjoy this. It's actually a bit fancy for me, <laughs> all of this stuff, but it's um, it's a light, a very short day hike or two day hike into the woods. And um, when you've got a, a bit of a equipment to, to uh, try out and things like that, you sort of want to uh, travel as lightly as possible. But hoping we can get some fish uh, later on when we go for a fish. And take something from the land which beats store board equipment and food hands down. I'm really impressed by these meals, they taste really good. A lot better than army ration packs, let me tell you. And probably a lot healthier. Smells really good. My guess is we can put some more water in that and reuse that coffee. Be a bit weaker, but I'm not that much of a connoisseur. And to me, if I can get multiple uses out of something, I will. Get over there for a bit. Into that. We'll add some powdered milk. Powdered milk is great stuff. We use it all the time at home. Don't have to worry about keeping it cold. You just have to stir it vigorously and don't make a mess. All the stuff in Sweden is all natural as well. No preservative, a lot of organic. Really, really good stuff. Very, very impressed. <clears throat> that is delicious. Mm. Really, really good. Who would have thought you could have a cup of coffee like that out in the bush? Mm. Fantastic. Quite strong actually. A bit too strong for me, but still, nevertheless, delicious, and that'll give me a bit of a perk up, ready to go fishing. Cheers. I've just been cleaning up camp a little bit and I've taken my sleeping bag, the uh, uh, Softy 6 Kestrel, out of it, out of the um, bivy bag and I've hung it up just to dry to get rid of any uh, moisture that might have built up over the night. Always important to air your gear out. 
and I've done the same with the uh, Cedar Summit Thermalong liner. And very important to air your, 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 your gear out to get rid of any moisture. That's one of the great advantages of the A-frame hutchie setup, is that you've got a nice ridge line to hang things over. Works really well. So I'm taking advantage of the sun and uh, we'll just give that a couple of hours while the sun's out and we'll put it all back in. Okay, what we're going to do, we're just going to leave camp and we're going to go over to the river and have a fish and try our luck. I've tried down here a few times, I've tried a few different lures and nothing's taking anything, whether it's the rod or the hand line. So I think we'll go and try our chances in the river. It's probably been fished out there, but um, who knows. But we'll go and give it a shot in the river and see what happens. Fish on. You beauty. Look at that. Isn't that fantastic? How is that? You are dinner. Looks like an arctic char, I think that one. Whoops. Well, that's the case of one, the one that got away. Well. Somehow I doubt I'm going to get that chance again. Damn, oh well. That's my own silly fault, that one. I came up here to check the ch camera <laughs> and I lost him. Oh well, you win some, you lose some. Let's hopefully we might get another one. <laughs> Bugger. Well, here we are back at camp after a very frustrating afternoon's fishing. And as we saw, I got a really good fish. I think it was a grayling, actually. Bloody beautiful fish. But when I tried to get the camera to turn the camera down to get a closer look, he flipped, flipped over the bank and the, the line got wrapped around a tree and it snapped through his, uh, through his mouth. So I can't tell you how exasperating that was because that was a really nice fish and that was going to be dinner tonight. But that's the way it goes sometimes. Anyway, can't keep beating myself up about that. But... I guess definitely the one that got away. However, you, you, got, you got to see it. So, what I'm left with tonight is pasta with tomato and garlic, which is our uh, last evening meal. Because we'll I have breakfast tomorrow, then we'll be off. Um, so I'm looking forward. To, I'm pretty tired actually today, so I'm going to get a nice, uh, a nice night's sleep if I can. But it's hard when it gets dark so uh, so late. So my time clock is just all over the show at the moment. So um, it would have been nice to have fish, but uh, it's not going to be. So uh, we're going to hook into some of this.
we always have to keep the water boiling so we've got a fresh supply of, a supply of fresh water so constantly boiling water so it's got time to cool okay I made myself a coffee as well not that I want to stay awake these titanium mesh plates made at Alton Goods Sam does all that stuff he makes really good hammocks as well but they're great to put across the fire across two bits of wood ultra light fits in the pack really really easy I mean as remember bushcraft isn't about kit but there are some things that make things uh, a lot easier and that's like one that's one item that that I always comes with me everywhere everywhere I'm pr pretty impressed with it very very light very simplistic in idea but it works a treat and it's often the simple things that are the best and so you can minimize your kit just to the bare essentials but that's great and that's at Alton Goods and they make good hammocks as well okay I think it's time to hook in for dinner well I thought I'd have a change of, change of scenery tonight and eat my dinner down near the lake it would be great to have fish instead of this or add some protein to this but not to be I'll leave that alone now <laughs> but um, yeah it is beautiful it's just nice to relax and chill pretty tired very tired and haven't had a lot of sleep of late and the time change and also the, the, the daylight hours for so long it's actually half past nine now already and it's going to be out of dark, um, light for another hour at least so yeah I generally sleep when it's dark and get up when it's light so yeah pretty 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 knackered well it feels really nice to lie down I can tell you that so been a very long day it's really peaceful the mozzies are pretty cooked today though pretty there's a lot of them and uh, wasn't counting on the mozzies in Australia I always take a mozzie net but uh, I didn't bring one so I'm probably going to get eaten tonight and didn't bring any moz mosquito repellent either so um, bad preparation but to be honest I thought it might have been a bit cold for them but uh, not the case <laughs> and they're eating me now so I'll just have to uh, they'll disappear once it gets a bit uh, cool I'd say anyway that's all for me today uh, and uh, gonna get a good night's sleep and I'll see you in the morning well good morning uh, another chilly night but, but um, I had a better night's sleep probably got close to six hours actually the sun was up again around four o'clock but I tell you what, I've got this on because the mozzies were absolutely ridiculous. I was very, very surprised. And I didn't bring any mosquito repellent with me because, um, quite frankly, I didn't think I'd need it. But poor judgment on my behalf. It was actually a hot day yesterday and the mosquitoes were around all night. So I had to um, get my, uh, what usually my fishing net, and stick this on. It did make a difference. So we'll get into it. What I thought we'd do to get our fire going this morning, we're going to look at another type of tinder. And this is a lichen. It sort of grows all around the boreal forest. We've seen a lot in Alaska. And um, it grows where the air is nice and clean, clear and clean. And that's pretty much up in the northern, the uh, northern temperate forests and the boreal forests. And it's a lichen, also known as old man's beard in Alaska. And it works really well for fire lighting. I've been collecting stuff and putting it in my pocket to keep it dry because it's just starting to rain. Got some more over this, more over here. There's not a lot of it in this area, but I've been collecting a little bit, and that's going to give us a good, uh, as we can see, fire. It's a lot of surface area, and that's going to get our fire going this morning. But you have to keep it dry, so I'm putting that in my pocket to keep that dry. So let's go and hook into our fire. The other thing I've done is that I've got my wood pile underneath this pine and because it's nice and dry around this area so I've been keeping my wood in these sorts of areas just to keep it uh, dry in case it starts to rain which it is. I've got a little bit of birch bark to add to that so there's my look at that as a base
in order to further protect this fire I've cut down some of these spruce boughs and that's the other reason I leave my tripod long so that I can hang things in them and that's just going to further protect the fire so it droops and hopefully it'll drift away from the fire and not on it and I'll go round and I'll make this like a waterproof roof over my fire and that's going to keep it nice and dry underneath so we've got our roof over our fire now we've got some water on the ball and we have a nice warm cup of tea it's just a matter of trying to keep dry so this fire is nice and protected as I said it's nice to have when you tripod keep the ends long because it allows you to put boughs and things like that to waterproof it and hang stuff up to dry if you need so tripod is really really good because I thought we might get some weather that's one of the re other reasons I brought the tripod but looking forward to a nice hot cup of tea well, as you can see it's definitely a bit wet this morning but it's toasty and dry under here so yeah, it's pretty, pretty nice actually it's nice being under a tarp and hearing the rain on top of the roof it's a quite a special feeling actually but just being aware of being uh, keeping warm because you don't want to be wet and uh, cold because that's a dangerous combination that's why a lot of the things I have are wool because wool can get wet and it still retains something like 60% of its insulary value when it's wet so it's a, it's, it's a great garment to have, particularly in, in cooler climates. And even though it's been pretty warm during the day, it's been pretty cool at night. Now we had the rain, as I said, if you're not careful, that can be a dangerous combination. But as long as I keep dry, that's the main thing. I'm actually going to put a set of, um, I've, got a, I've got a change of clothes, but um, so I've, I've got something warm to put on. But I've got some woolen things under here. So um, other than that, that's, it's nice. It's, it's quite nice being out here. This might want to take care of business. It's um, yeah, it's, it's, it's beautiful. It is. Well, it's still raining, as you can see. So I've collected some firewood. Got a big stash of firewood sorted out. That's only got more water on the boil, and I'm just having a, a bit of a late breakfast. So. Uh, yeah, other than that, it's all good, I'm dry. I've put a, um, some thermals on underneath, so I've got a warm layer and I've got some wet weather gear over the top. So I'm actually completely dry un un underneath. And I'm going to look at start, there was some things I wanted to going to get into some spoon carving today and a few other things, but the weather's sort of changed what I'd planned to do. So we're going to, as soon as I'm sort of ready, we're going to start packing up and getting ready to go because I need to be back by lunchtime. So, um... It's always a pain in the backside trying to pack up in the wet because everything's wet and all of that sort of thing. It doesn't pack as well and it's heavier and all that sort of thing and then you only have to dry it out later. So that's just the way it, uh, the way it goes. Well, I've rigged up a little bit of a washing line. It's a great thing about having a tripod. You can do quite a few things. So I've got to fire at a safe distance to get some, some extra clothes dry and it sort of it, they, uh, takes up less weight. I get them dry plus I've got an extra set of clothes. They will be a bit smoky but that's the least of your worries. Having them dry is the most important thing. And yeah, so tripod's great. Just a bit of paracord tied around the uh, top and it's actually quite dry under there. And the, uh, the spruce boughs on top prevent any rain from getting there so it shields the fire and dries your clothes. Well the rain's finally stopped and I'm in the process of drying everything. In, the, in preparation to pack it all up. So in the next couple of minutes we're going to start packing everything up. Hopefully I can get everything dry. Well, as near as dry as possible. There's nothing worse than packing wet stuff away than having to take it out to get them dry. So it's a bit of sunshine I'm trying to um, get as, as, as dry as possible and also makes it a little bit lighter as well. So we'll crack on with it. <laughs> Now with the fire, I've planned it 
so that it's burnt down to ash or nearly ash just with a few bits of uh, coal and that's so we don't have any rubbish because there's nothing uglier or more unsightly than unburnt pieces of wood and you go see that all the time in campsites because people just haven't timed it they haven't I've tried to try to let it consume itself so there's little to clean up and then it makes it easiest for it to, to cover the area so it looks like no one's been here so I've got some water here that I've just gotten straight out of the creek I should say lake of course that's going to go towards the camera and as you can see I'm putting on a lot of water and you can see there's a lot of heat in there an awful lot of heat so we'll let that cool down a bit and then we'll scatter those ashes okay that's just warm to the touch now so I'm just going to get some of these ashes or I should say just the chunky bits and I'm just going to throw them away then I'm just going to get a stick and I'm just going to cover this all over again actually So I've cleaned up the area, covered over the fire completely. I've put some more water on it and I've gotten a lot of uh, debris from around the place and tried to restore the um, area to, to what we found it and blended it all in. The whole idea is to leave no trace or well, minimal trace. You can't leave no trace, but we want to minimise our impact as much as we can. And I've gone around and just, just tidied up so it looks natural. And that's what you need to do and if you're not prepared to do that and go to that effort to look after the fire then you really don't deserve to be going into the bush because all the rules that we're governed by particularly in australia you can't do this you can't do that are because people don't know how to take care or don't are ignorant of the fact of how to look after the environment properly um, and take care of it so there is no trace and if everyone did that we'd probably find that we'd be able to go to a lot more areas than we are and a lot of the rules um, exist because people simply don't know how to do the right thing. That's all it is. So if we all practice things like this, all of a sudden we're able to go and roam like you can in Sweden. Any People can go everywhere in Sweden and camp and light a fire because people look after. They don't litter, they look after the environment, they know what they're doing and they have respect for the land and everyone else. If we could do that back home, then maybe these sort of rules or maybe this, this freedom could be extended to us as well. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this episode in Sweden as much as I have. There's a few more things I would have liked to have done, but the weather put pay to that. But it doesn't matter because I had a great time and I hope you did as well. If you like these videos, please like, share and subscribe to the channel. That way it will make it more visible and help rekindle bushcraft in Australia. If you'd like to do one of our courses, go to www.bushcraftsurvivalaustralia.com.au. My name's Gordon Dedman and I look forward to seeing you again on the next episode.